evaluate the limit. This time it's the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus 3x to an exponent of cosecant of x. Well, that's pretty ugly. But, I mean, we should probably try evaluating the limit, um, you know, in the easiest possible way. Hey, maybe it'll work, right? Let's think about this function at a value of x equals 0, um, in which case we'd apparently be getting 1 minus 0, or 1 minus 3 times 0, and the cosecant of 0. Well, a cosecant is 1 over the sine, so 1 over the sine of 0 would kind of be approaching infinity, and that is one of our indeterminate forms. Actually, it's one of the really bad indeterminate forms. It's one of the indeterminate forms that we can't really do L'Hopital's rule with yet, okay? So these are the exponential um, L'Hopital's rule, sorry, the exponential indeterminate forms. They can look like one to the infinity, they can look like zero to the zero, and they can look like infinity to the zero power, okay? Just because of mathematical reasons, these guys are indeterminate. And we can't do anything with them until we do something pretty clever with the uh, problem as a whole using logarithmic functions. So what if we say that we are looking for information on a function that goes y equals 1 minus 3x to the cosecant of x? And just bear with me for a moment while I take the natural logarithm of both sides of this equation. So you take the natural logarithm of both sides and naturally you have ln of y equals the ln of this thing, 1 minus 3x to the cosecant of x. Now there's a rule about logarithms, okay? So when the argument has an exponent, you can take that exponent and put it down as a product, as a factor rather. So ln of y is actually equal to um, cosecant of x times 1, or rather, sorry, times the natural logarithm of 1 minus 3x. Okay, that's kind of interesting because cosecant of x is actually 1 over sine of x times the ln of 1 minus 3x. And as it turns out, this of course can be written as a fraction. We'll have the ln of 1 minus 3x over the sine of x. So long story short, the ln of y is this, ln of 1 minus 3x over sine of x. Um, what if we tried to take the limit as x approaches 0 of this function? I know it's not what we were asked, but what if, we, what if it was? Um, the limit as x approaches 0 of ln y would, of course, be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of this thing. And this appears to be, well, if I plug in 0 here, I'd have an ln of 1, and that's 0. And if I plug in 0 here, I'd have sine of 0, which is 0. And that's one of the good indeterminate forms. That's one of the ones that I can actually do L'Hopital's rule on, which means if I could do the problem with this, then I could do L'Hopital's rule on it. Take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and try the limit again. Of course, in order to do that, we have to express the original problem in this way. And how can we do that? Well, we're going to use the fact that e to the ln of y is actually equal to y, okay? e to the natural logarithm of a thing is equal to that thing, which means taking the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the ln of y would be the same thing as taking the limit as x approaches 0 of y itself. So since this is true, I can go ahead and restate the problem as the limit as x approaches 0 of e to what? The ln of y, this thing, this thing that we created. So let's put that in. We can take the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the ln of 1 minus 3x over sine of x. Now remember, this limit was indeterminate. However, L'Hopital's rule still works even when what you're working with is trapped inside an exponent of anything, but in this case, e. So we're going to run L'Hopital's rule on this fraction. And I think we're going to get a pretty cool result. This should be the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of e 
So let's think here. The derivative of the top here, taking the derivative of ln of an argument, we'll have 1 over that argument, 1 over 1 minus 3x, and then we'll have chain rule times the derivative of the inside. So we're going to get a minus 3 out of that. Let me go ahead and put it up here. So you can see what I did there, the minus 3. And then we have this over sine of x. I'd like to take the derivative of that, so that turns into cosine of x. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to break my neck uh, simplifying this. Let's just see if we can do this limit, right? Can we plug in 0? Well, actually, yes, we can, because this should become e to the negative 3 over, um, well, let me be consistent, over 1 minus 0, right? So negative 3 over 1 over cosine of 0, which is 1. In other words, negative 3 over 1 over 1, or e to the negative 3. That's right. It turns out that the limit of this thing, by some very clever manipulation of the laws of logarithms, is equal to 1 over e cubed. And a very interesting result indeed.